We are here at the B20 Summit and of course we've got a host of global voices. Joining us for a special interaction is Ms. Candice Johnson. She is the co-founder of SES and someone who looks at the global space industry very closely. Thank you for your time, Ms. Johnson. And to start with, I'd like to begin by asking you your take on India's moon mission being a huge success first. Well, first of all, I have to congratulate India. I was so excited and I'm so thrilled to have been here You know, when you landed on the moon. Um, the, it, this is a particularly important uh, accomplishment not only for you but for the world and for space in general and the reason why I say that is that um, you have landed you're the first country to land on the south pole of the moon and this is where we hope we will be able to find water and when we and and so this you know the current thinking is that we are really going to use the moon as a jumping point to go to Mars. So, so the fact that you are the first to have done this is truly significant. And I think it paves the way for uh, India to continue its leadership. And now as we enter this next phase of space, which is what we're calling space in space and space exploration. So right. it's a phenomenal achievement. Also, of course, I have a great say, milestone at that and of course a huge, huge achievement for yes, India. Absolutely. And uh, lots of lessons for the rest of the world to learn from India, in fact. Well, indeed, you know, I, I'm also chair of Sarah from Space, so mm -hmm. we're the world's largest space tech venture fund. Uh, we're quoted on the London Stock Exchange. And so, of course, I have to look at it, you know, also from an economic point of view and an investment point of view. Mm -hmm. And the fact that you've been able to do this with 73 million dollars is really great. It's remarkable. You know, it is, and, and, and you know, it's, it's good for me and, and my, um, my venture fund because you know, we can say, hey look, you know, if the Indians can do it for 73 million, just imagine what young entrepreneurs can of do. Course. So India set yeah. a huge example there for yeah. the rest of the world for yeah. sure. Yeah. Now going forward, you're someone who also looks at the AI space very, yeah. very closely. And of course, everyone's been talking about generative AI, how yeah. AI is going to change our hiring skill set altogether in yeah. the times to come. Yeah. So how can you elaborate on that and how will that really impact hiring globally? So um, first of all, I have to say that I'm also the, the vice chair of the Institut Europea, so the European AI Institute. Mm -hmm. So indeed, w what we try to do is we try to put the human face on AI for citizens throughout Europe and of course throughout the world. And um, you know, I've been involved so many times in my life as the first. So you know, I did the world's first transporter satellite television. I did the world's first internet-based online service with Europe Online. Um, one of my very dear friends, um, Vivian Rading, Vice Chair of the European Commission, she did the GDPR, um, which I think is very important to protect the people's data. So, so you know, there are always good things and there are um, uh, not so good things. Mm -hmm. And in my life, I've always focused, obviously, on the good things, but tried to put in place uh, a framework to protect and secure the, the good things so that they could be used. Right. So I, I, I'm, 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 I've coined a new phase here, a phrase here at, um, uh, at, at Delhi, at the B20, where I'm also very proud to be uh, co-chair of the Technology Innovation and R&D Task Force right. with um, uh, Mr. Chris um, from um, Infosys, the, the co-founder of Infosys. Right. And basically, I'm telling everybody that AI is really equates to actionable insights. So AI, artificial intelligence, equates to actionable insight. Interesting there, but of uh, course a lot of leaders here in India Inc. as well yeah. has been saying that look there's a need to regulate AI. Yes. Um, so do you agree with that and where do you see this framework going? So that's why I did talk about my friend GD, uh, who, Vivian Rading mm -hmm. who really was the instigator of GDPR. And the thing is 
you know, Sakshi, is that Vivian and I, we've been friends for 40 years, already 30 years before GDPR, she was asking me, Candace, what about the, the data privacy of citizens? And you may know that the European Constitution is the only constitution in the world that protects citizens' data rights. So she, so I, before I came here, I said, you know, Vivian, what should I say? Because this is going to be happening. And so she, the, the thought behind the GDPR, which has really become the gold standard for protecting citizens' data, you know, she said, look, Candace, the most important thing is that we put into um, place a framework that will respect and protect people's privacy mm -hmm. and data and that we at the same time allow technological advance to help the world. Right. You know, it took about three years to put GDPR into place mm -hmm. and the EU, the European Union, has just put in place the AI Act, mm -hmm. which will be an iterative process. So I think and I hope that here at the B20 and the G20, we will continue an iterative process and we will get to the point, I'm an optimist, right. where we will make certain that all of the good things from AI will be able to be used to benefit our universe. Right. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on, of course, the space and the AI industry going forward. Yeah. Thank you for your time. Thank you for asking me to come.